Hello everybody and welcome to Performance on Wheels. What I'm currently standing in front of is one of my all-time dream cars. This is my 2002 Chevy Corvette C5 Z06. wanted one of these since I think it was like six years ago. I was randomly walking through a car show parking lot. I hated Corvettes. I despised GM products in general. So many. How there were so many of so them. Boring. They were so over talked about. I was just a huge Dodge fan. This is before the Hellcat came out. Challenges were kind of rare. I liked the way they looked. I was just a diehard Dodge guy. And then I was just walking through this car show and all of a sudden there it is. There's a, there's a C5 Corvette Z06. Mm, silver, silver with a red interior and it had like the the like aftermarket racing seats that were red in it but it had like the red dash and the red door panels What's it was up? on some five spoke chrome wheels mm. with a big brake kit mm. it had like some side lower valances i'll try to throw a picture of it right here if i have it but that car all of a sudden entirely flipped my brain around and i all of a sudden loved the c5 corvette it was from that day forward, I started doing heavy research. I went for a test drive in one, and I came to realize that the C5 Corvette was one of the greatest performance cars ever built for under, at the time, $25,000. I could not believe my eyes when I was reading some of the stuff that I was on how fast this car was for the price point that it was at, and I had no idea that this was a thing. So I had my eyes set on one of these. I loved everything about the way it looked. I loved everything about the, the power plant and what it was able to do. So that's what I tried to do. I went out and I tried to buy myself a C5 Corvette Z06 and I failed. I failed miserably. I sure searched did. for four to five months nonstop. I couldn't afford one. I was, what, 19 years right. old. And I this, so, so this was silly. Other than a Ford shirt and the Corvette video, what did you end up with? I ended up with a Cadillac CTS-V. So it was exactly not what I was looking for necessarily, but it had one thing that I was looking for, mm -hmm. which was the LS6. <laughs> I really, really wanted the engine that was in the C5 Corvette Z06. And I came across that car and Great I'm not car. gonna lie, I fell in love. It was awesome. It was a really awesome car. I didn't really modify it, like the body at all. I just liked the way it looked. It was just a nice looking car. Yeah. Not to mention it was very hard to modify if you wanted to, because they had like a six lug bolt pattern. So wheels are super hard to mm -hmm. find. Nobody made anything for them. So I put a little wing on the back. I put some, you know, high performance. I, yeah, I did some high performance pads, rotors, tires, some exhaust work, and that's about it. Right. And I loved that car. But I still didn't have my heart desired because it was a big four door sedan that didn't handle like I wanted a Corvette to handle. So I sold it and I came across this the day that I sold it. Now I'm not gonna give you the whole spiel on how or what this car came from. There's a video up in the corner if you're curious about that, but ultimately this was one of the cheapest Corvettes that was for sale in the United States at the time, and it had a lot of damage done to it. So I spent uh, three to four months, I don't even remember how long it was, I think it was three months. Every single night when I got off work, I came home or I went to my friend's shop and I worked on this car until 11 o'clock to midnight almost every single night. You got her done. I transformed 
transformed it into what it is now. It is a carbon fiber wide body C5 Z06 with C7R edition wheels on it. It has long tube headers, full exhaust, short throw shifter, and it, I love it. And it does not ride like a Cadillac. It does not ride like no Cadillac, that is for sure. But I am now here because I have driven this car. I've put 9,000 miles on it this summer, and I am here because I was sold on the C5Z06. I'm gonna try to sell you on it. When I first was originally looking for a C5Z06, I didn't know a ton about the platform, except for the fact that I knew that the transmission was in the back. It had a T56 transmission, it had an LS6 up front, mm -hmm. and it had a torque tube that connected the two of them. Now, I did not know much about reliability. I didn't know much about maintenance. Uh, I knew that they were like somewhat reliable, and that's all that I knew. Now that I've owned one for a bit, I've gone through some of the common issues with these. I'm gonna go ahead and share all of those with you. I'm going to share uh, what it is like modifying these with one with you. I'm going to share what it's like taking it on a road trip, living it on a day-to-day -day basis, owning it. I'm going to go through everything on this car and we're going to start off with the aftermarket. Now, the aftermarket on this car, very, big. very, very big, like absolutely massive. So what I always hated growing up about Corvettes is you saw them everywhere. Mm -hmm. They were all over the place. There was the car shows, there was the chairs. Now, the There's thing that- the same American flag between yep. the exhaust. The same American flag between the exhaust and it, they were just all the same. It was all the same thing. Mm -hmm. it, it never changed. And then I looked at the aftermarket after I bought this car and it never ends. It's yeah. huge. It's great. It is the biggest aftermarket I've ever seen for a vehicle because there was a million of them built and everybody that has one wants to make them unique in their own one Corvette. Now, I truly do believe that this is pretty unique and it is mm -hmm. my own Corvette. And I really like the way that it stands out from the aftermarket sleepy eye headlights, from the LED tails that I have on it, from the wheel options that you have because every Corvette generation has the same bolt pattern. And as long as you use the right spacer or do the right wide body kit right. or put the right seats in it, you can make anything work on this car. Wait, are those C7 wheels and C7 emblems? Yes, they are. What's up? Yeah, so the, the aftermarket on this car is tremendous. So if you are scared of this car because you don't want to be like everybody else, you can make yours different than everybody else's because you can buy a different wide body kit. You can buy different wide body fenders. You can buy a different wing. You can buy different headlights. You can do a different bumper. And there's constantly, because there's kids my age now that own these, everybody wants to make theirs their own and everybody that makes their own, other people want a piece of that, so they start selling it. So there's people that are now trying to fabricate C8 front bumpers. There's people trying to make huge diffusers that are built into the bumpers. There's people that are making chassis mounted wings. There is so much aftermarket and there's so much that you can do with these and they look so good. Yep. I've always really liked the way the C5 looks because the C5 is the FRC body, which I'm sure you guys are aware of, but it was the lightest generation of the Corvette. We don't have that big glass and it is not a mm. true coupe or it is a true coupe. It's not a hatch like the, like the standard Corvette. Now, the next thing that I want to talk about on my C5 is how it has been to me the last 9,000 miles when right. it comes to reliability Zero and overall uh, what we've gone through. And powertrain wise, I have had one issue and that would be the clutch. The clutch in this car has a hydraulic clutch and they're known to just not be the greatest. They can be spongy at times. Now mine has recently come to the issue of where every time I use it after getting on the power, it engages at a different point every single time. So it works, makes it grabs fine, but it definitely makes things interesting. There's been multiple times where I've almost stalled the car because the grab points can be like right at the bottom at the floor to be right at the top to maybe in the middle. You don't know, it's just kind of a surprise every time you use it. And that's a common issue with these. And um, the way to fix it is well, bleed the clutch. If you want to bleed the clutch, go ahead. Just you got to pull the clutch out. Pull the clutch out. Yeah, that's easy, right? Uh, no, you have to drop the entire back end of the car, everything in the back end, the diff, the transmission, the entire cradle. You got to take out the torque tube, and there you go. There's your clutch. Uh, it's a very, very big job. It's a very expensive job, and I just highly recommend, obviously, swapping your clutch if you're just going to take it out to bleed it. So if there is anybody that has suggestions, because I've read that some people can bleed the clutch with it still, um, everything's still in the car, it's very hard to do, I would greatly appreciate that in the comments below, because I don't really want to put a clutch in it yet, because it still grabs fine. Um, 
Other than that, mechanically, I had no issues at all. Never I, overheated? No, uh, I did have an overheating issue. I forgot about that. But ultimately, that was uh, my radiator was just filthy. Fixed with a garden hose. It was literally <laughs> fixed with a hose. Um, yeah, my radiator was just covered in dirt and debris. And uh, we took off the cover, uh, kind of covered up the filter because we were on the fly and the uh, covered up the... Um, uh, throttle body once again because we were on the fly took a power washer right. and it's good to go it doesn't overheat i don't have any issues with it but there that is a common issue because the c6 is the generation where it started where there was uh, obviously a hole in the bumper uh, where air could go in and cool the radiator. The C5 is an entirely smooth aerodynamic front bumper and it takes air in through the bottom of the car and then mm -hmm. goes up and that's where the radiator is. So it takes in a lot of debris, For sure. a lot of dirt, a lot of dust, and it gets dirty in a hurry. Yeah. Now, when it comes to other issues that I've had, I have had electrical issues and these cars are very greatly known for very that. Very common for the Very, very common. There's tons of videos out there. There's tons of forums. A lot of people own these and there's a lot of help on the internet if you guys are curious about what those issues are. Um, the main ones are grounding issues and a big reason for those grounding issues is one, they're exposed and they can get dirty very easily. And two, the car is made entirely out of fiberglass with very few amount of points on the car that are metal. So there's just not a lot of area for the grounds um, and it can become an issue in a hurry if they're not, well, they have any corrosion on them or anything like that. I'm sure there's something to do with the very soft ride that the C5 Z06 has. Yes, the C5 Z06 has a very, very comforting ride. There's no <laughs> doubt about that. <laughs> very harsh, especially when you have it lowered on bolts like you're seeing this one. Yeah. yeah th it's jarring, so every component is obviously picking up some of that. I, I cannot attest to how a stock C5 rides. I don't know. Um, well, I've driven a stock C5, like a normal C5, not a Z06 with the comfort ride. And that, that car rides really, really nice. Right. Like I it's pretty comfortable. Right, I didn't have the C5 I owned. Yeah, now I have this. Uh, I didn't really drive it at all stock. I'm gonna be honest. It, it, it needed a lot of work when I first bought it and it wasn't really able to be driven when it was stock. So now that I have it lowered, not to mention on wheels that are two inches bigger than the stock wheels with a sidewall half the size of the stock tire, I, I don't know how much different it is than stock, but I have a feeling it's probably quite a bit worse than it is stock. Um, I, I, I can't attest to how it is, but it does ride terrible. It's really bad. It, uh, every time you go over a bump or something on the highway, it feels like the chassis is gonna snap in half, it's so bad. Um, but it doesn't, it just keeps on going. It keeps going. Let's turn on those lights quick. Look, okay. look, at, look at these lights. Let's turn these things on quick. And it's really cool that you can do all this fun stuff to the outside to modernize this 20 plus year old car. But let's be honest, the real fun and the real joy of this car isn't the looks of it. Yeah, they're good. Yeah, it's not just every other Corvette. Once you get that Corvette in your blood, it's hard to get it out. I've come to find that myself. But the real joy is behind the driver's seat, and that's where the C5 Z06 is probably the best sports car, the best bang for your buck that you can buy, period. And I don't know that there's any disputing that. If you're talking about an under $30,000 car for the ultimate joy, the ultimate experience between performance, reliability, gas mileage, looks, like there is no better car. I don't even know that there's any comparison or competition out there. No, there really isn't. And what's crazy about this car is the performance numbers that it puts out, what it keeps up with, being 20 years old now and at the price point that it's at. It's a 3,000 pound over 400 horsepower car. This thing keeps up with modern Mustangs. It keeps up with modern Camaros. It keeps up with, I mean, it's, it's not it's that far off. The modern Corvette, really. Mm -hmm. The modern Corvette C7 only had 60 more horsepower than this. Right. And it weighs the exact same. Right. So you can just do some very minor things and this keeps up with a C7 Corvette. So it is really crazy how fast these cars are. And it's not only about speed either. The handling is tremendous. Yep. This handles better than new cars because of how low and how wide the C5 or just the Corvette in general is. Where a lot of other vehicles like muscle cars they sit up a bit higher. The Corvette can take corners substantially harder. It can, the G's that it can pull are tremendous. I've driven this car in autocross courses, what, four times now, five times now. Every one of them, I've been in the top five. And my car, I've been going up against heavily modified cars and people that can drive. This car can hold its own. 
and it is, I mean, it's getting old. It's 20 plus years old. Just for reference on how quick it is, I'm not scared of scat packs. This thing will blow the doors off of a new scat pack. It honestly wouldn't even be close. Now, what is even more crazy is from a dig, this thing will keep up with a Hellcat in a quarter mile. Yes, a quarter mile, this car keeps up with Hellcats. That's pretty insane that a modern 700 horsepower car, because of power to weight ratio, this car will keep up with. That is incredible, it really is. Now the Hellcat, however, it, it obviously they're not the fastest cars in the world because they are so dang heavy and they will win from a roll just because of the sheer power, but it's tremendous how quick these are and you have to be careful with the price point that they're at. You can get in trouble in a hurry. You really can. You gotta realize that some of these cars that this keeps up with are 50, 60, $70,000 new. BMW M4s have 30, 40, 50 more horse than this, and they're brand new, $100,000 cars. This thing is no slouch. the Corvette to have a pretty dang high top speed, right. which if I remember right, it's like 170 something high 170s, mm -hmm. which is actually one thing that the Z06 is slower at than the base. Did you know that? Really? The Z06 has a lower top speed than the base gearing, Corvette what is it? because the C5 Z06 has substantially shorter gearing mm -hmm. because it rockets out of the hole. It rockets to 60. Uh, I think it's over a second faster than the normal C5 because the transmission is geared so much differently. Mm. Now that is uh, pretty much sums up why this car is amazing. Awesome. And I'm, I'm going to have so many more videos on it coming up and it is, it's, it's just everything about it. Like I love this car. When's the time car. to get one? Like two years ago, but essentially yeah. now this is the car that is going to maintain and continue to appreciate because they really are just that good. Uh, all of the driving experiences are going away. Uh, this is what remains as something that's reliable. And what within the other, my other favorite part about it is the way that it sounds. It's a naturally aspirated 5.7 liter V8. Beautiful. That the, Sing to me. Yeah, it, it, the way that the Corvettes route the exhaust, they echo the all of the mufflers are always right under the trunk so all the sound goes into the trunk and it makes the interior like a big nice uh, and quiet yeah yeah nice yeah. and quiet <laughs> it's like a big sound chamber and it just sounds so so good all right let's quit rambling and get out of here for today but we have a lot of other videos coming on this corvette we also have some other corvettes not only on the channel but in the future we'll touch base on c7 c8s uh so guys stick with us hit that subscribe button hit that like button Thanks for checking us out today. We'll see you next time.